So let's unpick and some of all of that, but let's start with you just telling me a little bit about something about the bit that precedes, uh, I guess, 2000, precedes option two, and, and you suddenly being uh, the manager of this quite radical intervention, I feel, for alcohol and drug use, you know, it, certainly within the UK, but probably within the world at that point in time. Um, so what... What was the bits of journey that got you, I suppose, in this combination of arriving at that place of being a social worker, wanting to work in alcohol and drug and wanting to champion a very different approach? Yes. Yes. Well, it goes back quite a bit before 2000. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to, we don't have to say exactly what dates so are much. but I, I, No, yes. no, but it does. I mean, it goes back to actually, it goes back to my childhood. Okay. Uh, and my dad's experience of his own drinking that helped him manage his deep grief from losing his wife. Uh, and my I mother. remember meeting your dad once. And he was a lovely bloke. I remember meeting him at the pierhead once. He was a, a marvellous yeah. man who struggled enormously. And, you know, one of the things that me and my sisters learned there, four girls, um, was that this sense of someone who was extremely loving and was just trying to function to stay with us rather than someone who was neglecting his paternal yeah, responsibilities. Yeah. And collectively as children, we took that perspective and understood that. And that was very different from everyone else's perspective, which was if he loved them, he would stop. So just at the very beginning of my experience, um, we had that understanding that we needed to see people for the challenges and the problems they faced mm. not not the challenges and problems they caused okay so that goes all the way back that's amazing all I the way back i didn't know that. that okay yeah and um my he was the most amazing man and and produced so much support for people who were struggling with their alcohol issues and there are still three rehabs in wales existing because of him mm -hmm. and he did it all voluntarily so he was an amazing man um he used to bring people who had nowhere to live who were drinking on the streets home so again in our young lives my my mum died when i was 14 and my little one was only four my little sister but we used to have people who'd come into our homes that dad would help um, before there was any hostels or anything. Yeah. Um, and we talk to them and listen, well, mostly listen, <laughs> listen to them. Later later on, um, I used to go out on the, um, well, they called it the soup run then. I was about 18. And what I noticed was that the people I was engaging with, um, it wasn't the charity of the soup. It was the human connection mm -hmm. that mattered. And I learned so much from them. Um, they didn't all respond to me in those difficult times in the middle of the oh, night. No, Someone comes into their place, the safe place they found in the street. You know. But um, the, the relationships that I struck up there, again, reinforced for me the humanity 